Welcome to this teaching tutorial on Legends of Learning. The purpose of this video is to show students how to log in for the very first time. I'm going to make the assumption that your teacher has provided you a direct link as well as a classroom code. Since these two items are posted inside of Google Classroom in a specific assignment, you will always have access to these two items so that you can access these resources at any point. Step number one is that you're going to click on the link that your teacher has provided. Next, you are going to head directly over to that website once that tab has opened. Once you're on that website, please come to the area that tells you to enter the teacher code. That same teacher code that was provided to you in Google Classroom, go ahead and type that in right here. Once you've typed that code in, press the box that says Next. You'll notice on this next screen that there are two options. My recommendation is to choose the Login button on the right-hand side of your screen. If your teacher has provided alternative instructions, please listen to your teacher's instructions. However, when I escort children into this resource, I will always ask them to use the Login button on the right-hand side of the screen. When you click Login, you'll be directed to a screen that looks just like this. Up on the top, you'll notice that there's a button that says Log In With Google Account. That's my recommendation. Click right there, please. After you've clicked on that button one time, your screen will change, and then you will see your name appear on the screen. Please click your name when it appears on the screen. After you click your name, you are going to enter your learning space where any assignments that your teacher has provided will appear live on the screen. I'm now going to model what it looks like to enter one of these learning spaces. You might not enter the same exact learning activity that I'm going to model, but I'll show you some of those key ideas that are central to all learning experiences. Please be patient while any of those activities load. On my screen, I see a Start button. I'm going to go ahead and click Start. If the instructions are not read out loud to you, over on the right-hand corner where it looks like a speaker, you can click right there and then the instructions will be read out loud to you. You may have four or five different pieces of instruction that are necessary in order for you to use that activity properly. Simply move to the next screen and then click Start yet again. Area is the amount of space a two-dimensional figure occupies. These are the instructions that I see on my screen. I'm going to click Continue. And just like that last screen, we also have a speaker button if you need those instructions to be read out loud to you. For this specific activity, I'm asked to drag and drop figures, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. When I first started doing this task, I didn't pay attention very well to the instructions on the right-hand side. I need a total area of just one. You'll notice that I have three different figures on the left-hand side to choose from, but only one is the correct answer. Once I complete the task, then I see information on the screen that gives me an opportunity to do that task again. You'll notice how it says try again or continue. I recommend that you do your best on each one if possible um, instead of just um, completing the task and then moving on. See if you can achieve a perfect score each time. Now, it's quite natural that the tasks will get harder and harder as I move through these activities. On the right-hand side, the first time, I didn't read the instructions very carefully. I'm looking for one singular figure with a total area of four. Now, I can achieve that with two different pieces that are an area of two each, but that's not what I've been asked to do. I need one singular figure with an area of four. Friends, don't be discouraged if you don't get it perfect the first time. It's okay to make mistakes. Try again. Just try again. That's a great strategy. Now here in this area, I've been given new instructions. What I'm doing is I'm blending multiple shapes together. I'm blending multiple shapes together to achieve a total outcome. During the course of any activity, if you forget what the instructions are, over here on the right-hand side, you'll notice that there's something that looks like the letter I. Inside this bubble, if you click one time, the, that information will pop down and you can read those instructions again. So 
I used some trial and error strategies. I tried one thing that didn't work perfectly. I tried another thing that didn't work perfectly. Finally, I realized that if I overlap the shapes, even though I have too many total squares, they kind of blend together and disappear. And so I found that that was the best strategy to use. So you'll notice that I'm going to pick up a shape that's a total area of two, and I'm gonna put it on top of these squares where I have three. I don't want a total number of five. When I place one square on top of the other one, it's kind of like the one below is disappearing, but the total area of my entire figure is four. And then I move over to this next figure, and in this next figure, I use that same strategy all over again. I want a total area of five, but you'll notice how I grab that one shape that's actually three squares long. When I place those three squares on top of those three squares, but one square overlaps, it's kind of like one magically disappears when those two figures blend together. And I have one figure in total, now that they've blended together, and I have a total area of five. And then you'll notice that I get five stars for completing that task. I don't need to try it again. I can continue. Team, thank you for doing such a great job of paying attention to this video. I hope that you enjoy Legends of Learning just as much as I do. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.